Hi and welcome to this uh, Markplex video. Uh, if you're not part of our email mailing list then please go to markplex.com that's m-a-r-k-p-l-e-x.com and join and I will let you know when I create uh, new free tutorials or introduce programs. Now this is not a free tutorial this is a program that is available for download for a fee from markplex.com however if you do download it uh, I have commented it and I think you will find it interesting and uh, educational it is somewhat similar to tutorial 13 if you've uh, if you've done that tutorial uh, which is available uh, on at markplex.com except this time what we're doing is we're drawing zigzags zigzag lines and um, you can look on TradeStation to get to understand what zigzags are but essentially they look for significant pivots every time we have a new zigzag confirmed and in this case this zigzag has been confirmed here because we're now starting to form a new downward zigzag line we draw the Fibonacci levels or rather we calculate the Fibonacci levels we only draw them for the last confirmed uh, zigzag line but we calculate the Fibonacci levels and then we can compare each one of those Fibonacci levels to see if it is close within certain tolerances defined by an input that I'll be looking at in a moment if those Fibonacci levels are close to an existing level that has been stored in an array then what we do is we increase the thickness of the line stored in the the level stored in the array and also if that thickness exceeds another user input then we extend the line to the right so you can see here that the blue lines are examples of these uh, potentially significant levels and uh, you can judge for yourself looking at this chart whether those levels are providing any support or resistance uh, here you looking at the 60 minute uh, S&P e-mini uh, what we're also doing though is drawing for the last confirmed uh, zigzag line we're drawing the Fibonacci levels and labeling them uh, with their values uh, now we have various inputs that I will just go through briefly here and this is a show me study incidentally and uh, I'll just explain the inputs for you um, show the zigzag that set to true or false depending on whether you want to see the zigzag incidentally the zigzag is calculated very similar to the uh, trade station zigzag program uh, except that we're looking at highs and low highs and low values to form our pivots and also the first zigzag is formed somewhat differently zigzag color set to dark gray um, by default fib color and these are the uh, the dotted lines also set to dark gray by default you can change those to each other color you like in terms of pivots what determines a, uh, a pivot we've set the le left strength to three and the right strength to three you can vary those but these are basically saying how many bars need to be above or equal to the pivot to the left and to the right um, retrace percentage this is the value that determines uh, what uh, a new zigzag line uh, has to um, exceed or go under to form a new zigzag line number of pivots this uh, by default is set to 50 you can have any value up to 500 but this is essentially deciding how large the array is that stores significant levels so um, if you set that to a very big number it will take more processing power and in fact the way this thing works is every time a new zigzag is formed the program will go through every single Fibonacci level within that uh, that new uh, zigzag and compare those to every single level within the array so obviously quite a lot of programming combined value this is saying if the new Fibonacci level is combi combined value above or below an existing line then we combine the lines and uh, increase the thickness of the line the uh, combined color that is dark blue showing those uh, levels you can make that whichever color you like now line sensitivity what this is saying is if the the thickness is greater than four or equal to four then we're going to extend the line to the right if it's under four then we're not going to do that decimal places this refers to the number of decimal places that we 
are showing for the uh, the fib levels that I just described. Now sort array this is a uh, a function that or rather this is a part of the program that if um, we find a new zigzag and calculate the Fibonacci levels if we um, if we have sort array set to true then the array that stores all the significant levels is sorted to make the more significant levels move to the bottom of the array prior to doing the comparison. So um, you probably want to have this set to false most of the time because otherwise what you'll find is that a lot of the um, previous significant levels are not within the current price action that you can see and it's more likely if you have this set to true that um, you will find that a lot of the levels are not within the, the price area that you're looking at because it essentially would make more historic levels and give them uh, move them to the bottom of the array so they don't get shuffled off the end of the array and uh, finally the um, the draw fibs set to true and that's just going to determine whether we we draw those dotted lines or not um, one thing I found when I did uh, tutorial 13 which is uh, another tutorial that I, I would recommend is a lot of people would download that and then they'd email me and say well I can't see any lines well one of the things with this program is you really need to be very careful about uh, setting these inputs and experiment with the inputs particularly combined value and line sensitivity so for example if I were to set line sensitivity to 1 what we're probably going to find is we're suddenly going to get a whole bunch of lines and sometimes we can get so many lines draw here that it's difficult to uh, see the wood for the trees um, uh, so so I would I would recommend that uh, if you do download the program it's very important to uh, play around with the input values just to sort of get a number of lines which is uh, not too many not too few um, so uh, for example also number of pivots if we could increase that that would that would potentially show us more lines uh, as well uh, but you know that's not necessarily a good thing anyway um, you know the, here's uh, an example of the uh, well let's just go back and change the uh, input and make that uh, go back to 4 So here, here we have it, it working. We just go back. You can see it happening on other um, other times. So you know it's up to you to work work out whether you think that these lines are really of any significance um, in terms of providing support and resistance. Um, oh, and incidentally, here you can see that we've got the fibs calculated to two decimal places. I also have um, this applied to a. Uh, foreign exchange chart and you can see here we've got it set to four decimal places so that was one of the uh, the settings that I I just showed a few moments ago so anyway um, you know if you're interested in downloading this please go to markplex.com and uh, click on the programs uh, menu item and um, if you're not part of the markplex.com email mailing list then please feel free to join and I will let you know when I release uh, free tutorials and or uh, programs such as this one. Anyway, thank you very much.